day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey everybody, glad you're back. Um, I hope you enjoyed part uh, eight. And like I said, we're getting done into the, uh, we're going to move to using Zoom for our Bible studies, our virtual Bible studies. Uh, we know we might keep those uh, as things return back to normal. And speaking of normal, we, we know that uh, a lot of the states uh, and a lot of the people wants to go back out into society and, and uh, practice social distance as much as possible, but get back to work, get into restaurants, get into uh, getting haircuts, bowling. Some even want to get to sports, to big games, pack arenas, I guess. Uh, some don't want to wear masks. I'm pretty sure some of you out there dealing with people who don't even want to put their mask on uh, and said I got the right to do it and, and, and they do have the right but they maybe either didn't get the message the memo uh, or they just didn't want to uh, accept that can you can you can you help contain the, the, the potential disease that's in you uh, the mask is not to protect me but for you to protect me by limiting the amount of potential virus that can come out of your mouth and spread to many others, especially those they said that uh, can have the disease but it doesn't affect them, but they are contagious and can hurt other people. But I guess some people didn't get that memo. Uh, and, and, and so many of uh, us will be going uh, back to our workplace uh, in the fall couple of upcoming weeks. We know that the death toll now is at 71,000. And because of the campaigns to open up again, the projections of death by August is 135,000. And that may be revised as well as we uh, move forward. Because some are taking a big political gamble to see what's going to happen. You know, I hope uh, the gamble pays off. Because I don't want to see that many people die. I prefer the other method, which is continue to keep that social distance, kind of stay home uh, for a while until we can try to get this thing to start doing a downward trends across the board, across the country, uh, as opposed to, hey, it's going up, but let's keep, let's go on out there, and let's take it. And I, and I think that's what some people say. Well, they, they want to take the, the risks. Our society <laughs> want to take the risk and say that it's a acceptable risk because they don't think they can get it. They don't think their children can get it. They don't think their spouses can get it. They don't think their loved ones can get it. Or they believe there's an acceptable risk because we got to get back to uh, the economy the way we want it. And, and you know, I showed you last week well, we feel like it's about Isaiah 6, chapter 6, uh, starting in verse 8 to 13. And in verse 12, I believe it was, no, 11, uh, Isaiah asked, said, how long, Lord? Uh, how long will you continue to do this? And he said, until the, the cities are desolate uh, and that the homes have no man inhabited. Uh, and I said, I think when I when I talked about that, and I'll, I'll put it, uh, you'll see that verse, that's, that, that slide up there, talking about Isaiah chapter 6, 8 through 13, you look at it. It's a very famous scripture, because the first part is talking about the fact is, uh, send me, Lord, to go and preach the gospel. 
uh, go preach the word of God. And God sit there and said that uh, you're going to go and preach to these people, but they will hear but not understand. They will see but they will not perceive. Their ears, their hearts will be fat and their ears will be heavy because they don't want to receive God's warning, God's call to change. And God said, well, I'm going to keep uh, allowing things to happen until the cities are desolate and there's no habitants in the house. I just pray that that's not where we're trying to go to. I, I pray that we do hear. We do understand. Some people, I was talking to a friend today, he was saying this, that uh, this this is more hyped up by the media. And I'm, all I can sit there and say, I don't see where 71,000 people dead is a media hype. <laughs> I'm concerned about the number, 71 dead people. I'm concerned about the, the mass graves. I'm concerned about the fact that some people can't even have funerals because the person dead it's contagious. I'm concerned about the fact that some people leave to go to the hospital with their loved one and the loved one goes park the car and they can never see their loved one again and the person dies uh, away from their family members. That's not media hype. That's what has happened has already happened and it's happening daily. They said in June it's possible you can see up to 3,000 people die a day. What? Uh, look, let's, I got that slide, this slide should be posted right beside me for you to read and we, we, we can't we can't, uh, we need to listen. We need to understand. We do need to perceive. And we do need to pray. But I mean, you know, I guess until it affects every person that wants to go back out there, then I guess there's nothing else we can do. So all I can do, all I can do is let's pray for the, the blood of Jesus to cover those who do care, but are forced to to go back out into the public to to work and be exposed. Let's just pray for one another. Let's pray that the that 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 covering will cover you, because you're not doing it because you want to, because you're ignoring something. You're doing it because it's it's what's. It's required where you have to do it. And I, I still hope that Isaiah 6, chapter 6, verse 8 through 12, and like I said, it's, it's, it's there for you. Matter of fact, I, it's probably better go ahead and read it for you again, right? So you can see it, see it too. I'm reading it, but um, I, to me, I don't like it, you know? Because, I mean, when you, when you look at this, chapter 6, and you start at uh, verse 8, it says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here I am, send me. That's you. Are you the one that the Lord sending? Is it me? Is all of us who take heed to hear the word of God? Verse 9. And he said, go and tell this people. Hear you. Indeed, you hear. You hear. You hear the death count. You hear the infection rates. You hear the pain, the suffering, and the heartaches. You hear it. But understand not. And you and see you indeed, but perceive not. 
You don't perceive the threat around you. You don't perceive the danger to the family and, the, and, and to your loved one. You don't perceive the danger to our police officers, the danger to our doctors and nurses, danger to, the, to the, our co-workers. Because you want to do what you want to do. Verse 10. Make the heart of this people fat. And shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ear and understand with their heart and convert to be healed. And that, isn't that what we want? We want to be healed so we can return to what we call normal living and enjoying ourselves, taking kids to the, to the park, watching baseball and football, bowling, ladies being able to do their hair, men being able to get their hair cut, people being able to play basketball, tennis, just walk and around and enjoy the, the sun, go to the beach or surf, that's what we want. So we want to be healed so we can do those things. Right? But do we need to take, make sure we take time to, 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 and be patient to do the things necessary to eliminate this threat? Because it's a threat. We all hear it's a threat. We all hear that there's a disease. We all hear that people are dying. We are hearing that a lot of people are being affected. We're hearing that. We heard the guidelines. We seen the guidelines. We've read the guidelines. If we do those things, we can be converted to be healed. Hmm. Eleven. This is very interesting because this part I really don't like more than anything else. I, I got the part about the not hearing and not understanding, perceiving, I got that, I got that. I'm looking at the consequences of the Bible said, re, re, be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Right? It says here, 11, Then said I, Lord, how long? And, I, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you said the same thing. How long, Lord? How long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitants, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. Really? Are we really that dull in here that we don't receive, perceive this as a threat? Do we really want to just do what we want to do? Don't care about trying to at least put on a mask to keep from spreading your germs around with other people. And he said, 13, I mean 12, and the Lord has removed men far away, and there'll be a great forsaken in the midst of the land. This land is your land. This land is my land. Huh? Do we want to keep it? Do we really want to ignore threats such as this? I don't. Look, be safe, pray, because I don't want to get to the point in verse 13, but yet it shall be a tiff. Out of, that means 90, 90 of the percentage will be God. And it shall return. All of God, 100% is God, and then 10% comes back. It shall be eaten as a tea tree and as an oak whose substance is in them. When they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be a substance thereof. Come on, y'all. Seriously. You know, this study, part B, we start talking about the fact is that it's time for the church to rise and shine. I was, trying, I was going to get you the scripture to read about Acts and where they actually saw it. Uh, moving out from the with the Holy Spirit, uh, being led by the Holy Spirit to go and uh, uh, they sold their property 
and they gave the, uh, everything to, to one another so nobody had any lack. That's what I wanted to cover and <laughs> I couldn't cover it because I was led to go back over that scripture again and I really say, good Lord, people, you know, we, we need to hear. We need to understand. We need to get the point, because Acts right here says, uh, <laughs> what I'm looking at. This is, uh, it says right here, this is Acts chapter 4, 31. Let me see, I read this real quick before the camera goes off. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they all filled the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they all, but they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and the great grace was upon them all. Neither were there any among them that lied, for as many as were possessors of land or houses sold them, and brought the prices of the things that were sold, laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according to his need. And, and that's the part we're going to, we, this part B is talking about, is that this, this is the time when the church rises up, and the thing we've been given, now we give to one another. There's people in need. There's people who lost a job. There's people that have jobs. There's people that lost their property. There's people that have property. And they sold, they, the ones that had possessions, sold those things that they didn't need. And they gave it to those who had need. And I'm saying this, isn't this a time of a great thing for the church to step up and try to help out as many people as possible. Help out a family member. Help out a friend. Love one another. All right, that's what I have to say. Uh, man, God bless you. And just remember, Jesus Christ is Lord, and we're going to get this victory. We will not have desolate cities, because we will hear, we will understand, we will perceive. Amen? All right, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, I'll see you uh, next time. For hey, say something about that. Uh, Jimmy, there's people who aren't in your situation, though, and we have to consider them. That's correct. You're That's still correct. able to get employed. You're still employed. Absolutely. You still have income. You have resources that are available. You can do things. There are those who are living paycheck to paycheck. Ain't got no paycheck. And that's gone. Yeah. So I I I lived that way, but I can't re recall the anguish that went with it. Because I've been so blessed. Not by anything I've done. You know, glory to God. It's just by his grace that I'm in the position that I'm in. Right. But it's hard to tell somebody who doesn't have income, don't see income, not to, to worry, you know? Right. And uh, <laughs> you're, you're, they're, they're being taught, these are who, those who are of precious faith are being taught, you know, uh, Giving it'll be given unto you, full measure, pressed down, shaking together. Just as long as you give, oh no, <laughs> exactly. you're gonna receive. Yeah, you know, didn't hear what then, I was gonna get into. And then you know they're talking about you know you got to put your trust in God and and that you'll you'll receive checks in the mail, you know, just out of the blue and all this other stuff. And now their their faith is in that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Oh, definitely. And so definitely. when when things don't change for them, you know, my, my heart just goes out to these people because, you know, honestly, I, I believe God is available and he can do miraculous things and he does do miraculous things yeah. but for the majority without his word and the revelation of it, then you're not going to get the fruits that, come with that if you know what i'm talking about right right because i mean it, it, it takes more than just hearing somebody give you a scripture and then you you trying to apply your faith that they have in that scripture yeah. without you getting into it and the holy spirit revealing something about those scriptures to you to where despite 
re reality and, and what's going on in this physical realm, that word still is undergirding you. It's still supporting you. You know what I'm saying? Where there is no fear in that stuff. So it, it, I, my, my heart just bleeds for these people who are in those, those situations and circumstances. Uh, but we can, you can always find scripture to still support you because, you know, the Bible talks about if God can feed the birds in the air, you right. know, they have no trouble, then right. he can actually establish you. So there is provisions that are out there. You just got to go get them, if you know right. what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. People are supplying food. You know, they're supplying support. You know, you just got to, you, you, uh, uh, you have not because you ask not. Amen. Come on. Come on. Yes, I don't worry. That's, go ahead. <laughs> like I was saying, and you're, you're absolutely right. Even though, in all honesty, I, I, I do understand that there's a COVID-19 out there. It's been around since the 60s. I'm, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, speaking against that, but I do know that I call it a scamdemic because I do believe that the vast majority of it is a scam. Although yes. The economic impact is real. Guaranteed. Yes. Amen. You know, a lot of people are suffering big time. Yeah. There's no doubt yes. about it. But, but, but you got to put your hope in something. It's got to yes. be something beyond what you can see with your eyes. Amen. Something inspires you to move. Like you say, there's things people can do, but they got to do. Like, like yes. I just said, Abdul-Jabbar story. You got to, you got to, you got to open up. Your, that when, like, like a lot of people say, when one door closes, another door opens. And you got to be Amen. willing to open that door and see what's going on over there. But, you know, you're talking about all these doggone millionaires, superstars, that have gave millions and millions and millions and millions. Then they gave a list of pastors. <clears throat> oh, man. Come on. And they ain't gave a dime. Come they on. haven't gave a dime. You know what I'm saying? I'm and these people are putting their trust in these churches, you know, and then the church is just failing them. And so right. in a, in a, in a, on a side note, it's a good thing that they're seeing that it's not about the church Be building. Yo. Build this. Oh, what I said last. Right. We are the church. This is yeah. the paradigm we shift that's coming are right now. The supporter. I, I still go back to uh, the scripture that you never hear taught in, in in church, and that's when everybody went and got their resources and put it in, so that everyone was sustained equally and did not have no want. You don't hear that preached. Yeah. Nope. Oh no. You don't hear that preach. So that's the church. That yeah. is the church. And 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 right now is a is a great opportunity for us to step, to step up. up as individual members of a body to support our body. Because yeah. like you say, you stub your toe, your whole body going to that toe. Yeah. The whole body is going to comfort that talk. I'll say this. It's such a great storehouse. Okay, so if it's such a great storehouse, now it's time to open up the doors and let some folks yeah, get on, all this stored up stuff. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Right. Amen. Not too much. I'm sitting here with the brothers. We are doing a little I online know. Zoom meeting right now. So, uh, yeah, it's working. That's that's where my heart is. And, 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 and everybody who knows me know that, look, I'm... I, my resources are available. Right. If I if I if I can give it, I'm gonna give it. I'm I'm not a hoarder. I'm not stingy. I know that what I have is a blessing from God, and He is my resource because I did not plan any of this life. Come on out. Come on. That I'm living, and it's only by the grace of God. So who am I to hoard over stuff, even to people that I really don't even want to be around? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I still right. will 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 do for them if they if they in need. So, yeah, but, but that, and I think you know what I'm saying. Like the other question too is, where do you go? Let let me put the church out of the way for a second. I'm talking about the person. Every individual out there, like you said, is if if I don't, you remember what Peter said to Jesus? Where do I go? You 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 have the breath. You have the you have the, the you have life. Where, yes. where else can I go? In this situation, is where when when you when I don't have a paycheck, I don't know how to get food on my table. 
where do I go? If, if it's not the fact is that God is opening up food banks, and then like you said, the church have an opportunity now to step up to the plate because you got people got, what, mansions to cost millions of dollars. <laughs> you, got, you got big buildings that cost millions, if not billions of dollars. But the resources to take care of the people, this is the opportunity for the Amen. church to step up. You know what I mean? I've seen a lot of them step up and say, look here, don't let this situation stop you from tithing. You still need to send your money in. Amen. You should see Chris a couple of weeks ago. Somebody actually had uh, somebody actually uh, said give a stimulus check to the yeah, church. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> you can't pay your bills. You ain't got no grocery. <clears throat> but you need look, to send it. The guy, I think Chris said last week. They said they haven't had an offering in a month. Mm -hmm. So, so, so y'all need to give up those stimulus check. That's it. Trump had his name put on him. The Great White Hope. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yeah, some people still haven't got their checks yet. I haven't got one. I won't get one. And and, and the thing and the thing about it, I'm saying is, where do you go if it this, if this ain't the opportunity to turn to him? Where do, do you go? Saying is, where else do you go? You right. This is the time for the made. church to 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 rise up because they the ability, you know the. Is there? There's vehicles in place, you know. Like even y'all, y'all may know that we do give to feed the children. Yeah. As far as this, so some of the money you got that goes to feed the children, um, it probably need to go all to feed the children right now because I do send it to you know like T D Jake and and uh, plus a dollar, just twenty dollars. But I do send that. But feed the children, we've been doing fifty to uh, twenty five dollars a month for them. And don't get me wrong, it's a good time for us even to, you know, to call up, you know, old friends, family members yeah. that you spoke to in years, just to check on them, see how things are going. Yeah. That, Amen. You know, that, you, that you care about them, you're thinking about them, and just kind of, you know, and then too, you know, the problem with us is that, you know, sometimes we feel like people are doing okay or whatever because, well, I know he got a job or whatever, whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of people need some assistance, man. And, and you know, if you real, People shouldn't have to ask you if you know they're hurting. You, yeah. you there should be something in you that say, you know, I'm gonna buy this bag of groceries. I'm just gonna take it by there and give it to them. You know what I'm saying? However, they, you know, I they don't, they, they don't need to call me and ask me. I know they could use a a, 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 a gallon of milk and a dozen of eggs or whatever the case may be. With mm -hmm. all, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. So, I mean, so, I, I, I call I, I call my mom every day. I, I went and visited some of my coworkers uh, yesterday. Uh, he has like a. He got a, he had diabetes and stuff like that too. Just see how they doing. Were you wearing you know, your mask? This is the time I'm saying. This is the time where the the real church steps up, ain't it? Absolutely, sure. absolutely. This, this is the time. And and you remember, we, if we're one body, like like Brother Addison said, it's a we're a body of believers, not 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 Amen. individual believers. And God gives to people by men giving to one another, right? Remember you said, you quoted it for a second, saying, give and it shall be given. Yeah. Press down, shaking together, run over, shall men yes. give unto your bosom. Amen. And that, that means that's the body of Christ giving. And the body yes. of Christ uh, visiting and checking in on people. This, like you said, like, Ch like Chris said, this is the a paradigm shift. Get out of the walls and get out to where the people are, and you can make changes where you can. And I think that's what's going on. So I think that covenant of pieces, and we learn it, we're gonna learn something out of this. Because Chris, I think that this this wilderness experience is going to change us to shift to that paradigm. I hope so. I hope so. I think so because it's exposing something. But as what he was talking about is exposing a body of Christ. Hey, big ministry, mega ministries, and all the other ministries. Mm -hmm. Hey, what, well, what, see, what, what, are you, what, what, what? You've been preaching. Now, what are you going to do? This, this, this brings to mind when Christ started his ministry. Come on, you know, <laughs> he he wasn't a part of that church. He was outside of the of the traditional yeah church. 
you yeah. know, and he came through and he disrupted everything. And the and and the uh, the uh, focus started to shift from the standard to a a whole nother uh, approach. Yeah, and he was doing things that that no other no other people were doing. You know that, and he was he was compassionate. Yeah, even where compassion wasn't the 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 norm. You know, uh, it just, it's well, amazing. When Jesus, when Jesus came, he said that the word said that Jesus was made a quickening spirit, right? And so everything that he taught and the stuff that he did was from that perspective. Unfortunately, what we've been doing over the last few decades is teaching scripture from an Old Testament perspective. We're still talking about dealing with material wealth. And that's what we got stuck at. Yeah. We're, still, we're still preaching houses and land and cars and so forth and so on. When Jesus told, was telling us that there was another aspect to our being that actually came about when he came into the, to the picture, when he entered his ministry, he quickened our spirit with the Father. We became one with the Father again through the work that Jesus Christ did at the cross. That was a spiritual connection that we didn't have initially. And then now he's teaching us how to live connected, but we never grasped that. Come and because on, man. we never grasped that, we never taught it. When he said, when he the stuff that he did goes beyond our ability to, to, to implement worldly means or material means to accomplish certain ends, he literally fed 5,000 people with a few loaves of fish. It, it, he walked on water. He extended hands. He gave sight to the blind. He opened deaf ears. And that. And then he says, in one place, these signs are greater shall you do because I go to the Father. Right. It's the Father's glorified. So when he made, when he came about and we became these new creations, when we were born again, come on. we got stuck in the old method of doing business. We stuck in the, in the Old Testament as new creatures. Right. And we've not been taught and we're not teaching who we are in accordance with what he actually provided for us. The, the, the work at Calvary was tremendous. Yes. It, it went beyond belief, and we haven't manifested it yet. Yeah. Because we're still mentally stuck in the Old Testament. You know yeah, how, the, the, the Old Testament seemed like they was given. I, you know, I, if I remember from at least from the scriptures, all I saw was I threatened to kick you out of church if you, if you don't conform to my behave, our behavior or our norms. You're supposed to give money to the ministry. Remember when Jesus got upset when he went into the uh, sanctuary oh, yeah. and they were selling? Yeah. <laughs> he said, you you do. Just, this is a house you of prayer. prayer. <laughs> you don't turn into a, a, a den of thieves. Yes, sir. So, so, so that body was not, it was all about giving, but it's not turning, you know, giving back. Mm. You know? Like, and, and, and now there's an opportunity for us to really, really to show how, like Jim had said, go out and check on your, you know, other people, see how they do it. Even with Elder Johnson, we did, I did offer to Elder Johnson, say, if you need to, let me know. Uh, because we need to be able to be, reach out for one another because we're stronger when we're together with, as opposed to being individuals. Amen. Amen. Because, now, now, look, $20 from me alone it's not going to do much for our family it's going to help but it's not going to do much yeah. but 20 dollars from everybody Woo! in this particular setting right here come on now is enough to support a family for not just a day but a few come on you know what i'm saying yeah so it's it's a, a little will go a long way if it's applied in the correct atmosphere Right. If everybody's giving One, a little, two, three, you know, four, and um, yeah, it's just mm -hmm. it's it's uh, it's amazing how how man. I just keep going back to 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 the local church, you know, how it's just it's mm -hmm. man. And like it's you said, <laughs> it's warped. <laughs> hey, hey, but but like you said though, is we're the church. Yeah. See, see what it's that that's the point is that we we have condition ourselves to look at ministries 
opposed to understand that ministry is just a vehicle for the church to do the work of the ministry to reach yeah. out right that's, that's where the peace gonna come from it's, it's um, a good lesson it's a good lesson i think that uh people are having to now uh go to their knees they're having to pray they're having to they're having to reach out and depend on him because they see all these other avenues that they may have placed trust in is, is not delivering or not doing anything for them you know just like as horrific as 9 11 was and the number of people died and all the anguish that we went through as a nation when you go back and listen at some of the stories of the survivors and how people got miraculously healed man you can see god in so many people's lives in so many situations people had to turn back home people didn't go to work that day things happened somebody said, Go downstairs this and that so so and even in this situation and then when all the dust settles there's gonna be so many miraculous stories of just needs being met that it's just gonna make you have chills yeah because people finally had to go back to the things that that that's true and not some facade out front trying to be the middleman and trying to represent God and instead of letting God be himself. In other words, we're talking about idols. We're talking about these kind of things that place better before God. I mean, we've kind of placed intermediaries between us and God, and those are the intermediaries that we believe in and trust in. Those walls are being shattered because they're, they're, they're not there when it's necessary. Amen. You know, the, the again, funny about it is that those that walls were not shattered. what I called you to depend on. I called you to look to me. Amen. And that's, and that's where we need to be. And sometimes it takes something catastrophic like this for us to reprogram our thinking and know, hey, my trust shouldn't be in that anyway. That's not where I need to be placing my trust at. Right. Amen. I've been right. I've been placing misguided trust. I need to redirect my efforts to the one true God. But and, Jimmy, you know that, that those walls were actually shattered when Jesus came to the earth. When, absolutely when that symbol i say symbolically actually when the, the curl was torn from rent from top to bottom we were at large able to enter to the holies of holies that's correct we can individually go to god and expect the response from him that we can follow those who are led in spirit of god or the sons of god come on my people and my sheep hear my voice and know that they will not follow so you said something that's really i think important that slips by us now we say we are forced to go to our knees to ask, which is where we should have been anyway. <laughs> but the beauty of it is that he allows this situation to orchestrate itself so he can put us in a position of power. Right. Absolutely. He is Absolutely. forcing us to be the sons of God. He is creating circumstances and situations that are actually pressing us into a powerful position that he has Absolutely. already made us to Exactly. 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 Yeah. You know what? In, in my fact, I wanted to show... Uh, the, the 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 scripture but you know we're talking about going in the wilderness right i want to go to jesus but before i go to jesus i wanted to uh show the example where he's coming from this is the uh the testing of your faith and it's dealing with numbers 21 verse 4. it's it, it just showing when 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 that god will bring things in or cause you to look up. Man, man. You know what I mean? Cause you to shift your focus. If you don't get your act together, I'm gonna do it. Amen. <laughs> hey, hey, man, so so man. so brother Jackson, you go ahead and take numbers 21, 4 through 7. Roger that. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Eden. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? Uh -uh. For there is no bread, there is no there any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. Amen. 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 And I think there's, uh, I guess, eight as well and nine. Go ahead and read that. Too. All right. All right. And the Lord said unto Moses, make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, 
when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole, and it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Amen. Hey, look, hey, Jim, that's almost like that uh, COVID-19. <laughs> uh, uh, if you get bitten, where are you going to look at? Huh? You're going to look to God. Come on now. Because I think Amen. even the people Chris is go, uh, protesting in the Capitol, I mm -hmm. guarantee the ones that get bitten, yeah, they they Praise they God. they gonna they gonna say, hey y'all. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, I, I don't think that was a good idea what we just did. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, come on now. Praise come God. On. <laughs> come on. Oh, yeah. it, 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 it's 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 a reality. I think we got Bishop, we got a, we got a Jim and D situation. Do make a shift in the paradigm of who you look up to. But it, 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 it's just, a, it's part of the will of the spirit. I could have sworn I read that scripture say, I took you to the wilderness to prove you. Is that true? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I took you there. Cause I, you needed to, you needed to understand.